to me or say to do and I am in a marriage. I am married to Mpo or say to do. We've been together for gosh, we dated for seven years and we've been married for ten years. Who shot their shot? Ish, you know this uh, <laughs> millennial speak. We met at university studying drama. We both majored in drama. Uh, or at least we, we studied a BA dramatic art. I think I first found him attractive after he got his bongo dreads. <laughs> he had these massive bongo dreads and spoke with this uh, proper, I can't even call it a coconut accent, but like an East Rand lock boot. Eh? So he spoke like a boot and he had uh, bongo dreads. And so the picture made no sense to me. And I heard his surname was, was it Osei Tutu, and I was like, yeah, man. This guy is as, a, as African as they come with bongo dreads to boot, but he speaks like that, da? Huh? So in that time, I was very, very curious about him, and he became my friend. It's not like we were friends immediately. I think we, we, we were kind of knew of each other, and we would see each other and whatever. And then he cut that stuff. I was like, oh, hello friend, how are you friend? It's so good to see you friend. I found her attractive, but I was always like, this is never going to be, it's just, it's not my type. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's just weird. He still st dressed like a skater dude at the time. So I still had to get past that, <laughs> but I really liked him. <laughs> there came a time in first year where we had to crew and crewing, essentially was building sets, doing the backstage work, and I had made it very clear to everybody who knew me at the time uh, that I was there for acting. <laughs> and then here's this guy who was the Musi Maimani of the time, in that um, all the seniors who were mostly Caucasian were all putting him in their place, and he wasn't crewing with the rest of us. Like, when we are for hours picking up heavy things, painting, sewing, this guy is off doing Shakespeare and cool scripts. I would arrive for crewing like 30 minutes before the end, and she would make a scene. We've been told in first year, you need to build sets and make these things look amazing. And as a group, we have to work together to get as high a mark as possible. And here's this guy who's just benefiting off our hard work, you know? I was a bit annoyed. But I couldn't deny that the guy was talented. I mean, it wasn't like he was in those plays just to play. <laughs> and then we got to know each other that way. We were dating different people at the time. And a few years later, he calls me to wish me a happy birthday or something. And I tell him, oh, thanks. By the way, I broke up with Mike. And he's like, oh, snap. I broke up with my person. I was like, oh, I mean, oh. And then <laughs> we kept our friendship through through that and, and then we decided, look, why not? There seems to be some kind of a connection. So <laughs> we, yeah, we, we decided to date. And I was very kind of like old school. I asked her out. I said, will you be my girlfriend? In the car, we were driving and he, so he goes, ah, so Jimmy, um, I love you. Will you be my girlfriend? I was like, how do you know you love me? <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, okay, I'm your girlfriend, and we were official. And seven years later, I proposed. When they say opposites attract, where I am impulsive, my man thinks things through. I just needed to be sure. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I wasn't out there kind of like whatever. She was my girlfriend, and it was cool. It was working. It was comfortable. We had our fights, yes, it, was, it wasn't always, you know, rosy. It wasn't the rosy, you know, seven years of... Ah. So I think it took seven years because we had some growing up to do. It took seven years because we are also very focused people. We were building careers. And so by the time he proposed, it was just the next natural step. We'd had our fights, we'd broken up. We'd have very, very serious kind of like... Uh, breakups and what have you and so when when those things happen you start to question whether this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with we broke up a few times um, three times to be exact and each time those breakups were important because when we got back together we were not the same couple we were when we broke up the first time which is dope like there's people who always go why must I go back 
and I agree if it's over it's over move on but for people who do get get back together what I've learned is if you, you get back together if you have fixed what ended things in the first place and fixing that has made you go there's so much more to redeem here than to lose my wife there's no replacing her you know she's a she's the light of our home when she's away yo we know she's away luckily she gave me three kids who obviously you know took characteristics from her the thing that really made me fall from poor was once I got past the phone goes, <laughs> and I realized how patient he was. And he wasn't a typical guy. Like, he wasn't moving with my kismo. And he was very unapologetic about how gentle he was. It was like, this is who I am. One of the things that the priest said when we went to premarital counseling was that we have to love each other enough to let the other person die. And what he meant by that is you have to love somebody so much that you know you don't own them. That... They, you know they don't belong to you. They're not your thing that you must say, ah, they are, they are yours in the sense that they've chosen you, you've chosen them, and you share this love thing. And if you love something or someone, you have to love it enough to let it go because that's how it flourishes, that's how it breathes. So that's what he had said. And so I feel like we are closer to that than we've ever been. The most valuable thing Dumi has taught me is not to take myself too seriously. <sighs> My husband has taught me to give people the benefit of the doubt. It is so easy for me to take things personally. And he has made me, or rather encouraged me, not to take everything personally. I don't think he realizes how big his heart is and how incredibly, incredibly loving and I like to call him human. Like you know when they say what it means to be human. Because when people say people are human, I always feel like it's a negative connotation. When, he, when I say my husband is human, he reminds me of essentially what separates us from the animals. Just put my phone behind it so that the box thingy doesn't slide like, because it is wet. <laughs> okay, get on top. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, good people? It's your boy Dennis and Gango, and welcome back to Defining. Right now, I am at Tux. Uh, the Defining team has their very first radio interview. For today, how we're going to start the show off, right? We're going to play a little game. It's mm. called Two Truths and a Lie. And because, you know, Defining recently has, loved, has been about friendships, mm. relationships, and so forth, let's, you know, try and keep it in that spectrum of life. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> I for the first time in a really long time only have one crush second one i've never met uh my girlfriend's friends okay girls with dreads turn me on <laughs> okay <laughs> which one is this <laughs> all right so celebrating one million views <laughs> Thank you so yes, much to one all the definers. We appreciate all the creators that support us. Yeah. Thank you, and let's do this. Yeah. Okay, please. 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 <laughs> is, that, is that not a... No, no, that's sweet. No, I just, um, people must understand, he means it literally, please. It's not some kinky thing. Wow. Okay, next. Would you lose an argument to make me happy? Yes, a lot of times. Okay. What makes me different from the other people you've been with? Your realness. Aww. 
Is there anything I could do to make you feel more loved? You do so much. Oh my word. Uh, I, I can't think of anything. You do so much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? No. I am perfect. I am the perfect man. What can I say? Gentlemen, yes, it is no. your turn to ask. No, I just asked you. No, I just... Uh, is there anything I asked you? Oh, me? my mistake. Do we have a relationship code of conduct? Oh wait, it was you that asked. You're right. That's my question to you. <laughs> Do we have a relationship code of conduct? No. Well, yes. Um, and we're not going to tell you guys. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think it, it, I think the most important thing about that is that it evolves. You have you have to constantly be checking in with it because I'm changing, she's changing, yes. this is changing. Yes. So it's not like if I say it now, by the time this is seen on the internet, it's it they've changed. It's amended. So I, we are not going to you know I mean. It's a lot of amendments. So amendments and uh, you know. Wait, is you asking now? Is it me? Yes. Sorry. Are you sure? Yes. Huh. What is something I could do to make you trust me even more? Talk! Tell me how much I will get in life cup. If you die. <laughs> I will never do that. <laughs> okay, right? You see, my put it down that my life cover mm. when it comes out if I die before you, which I do need to for fit to charity, then I will trust you because I will know you're not with me for the money you make if I die. That's not fair. What do you mean? That's not fair. Ah. Ah. Even me, I like money. Okay. No, so, well, now people know. No, whatever you want, ooh, bitch. Ooh, this question's hectic. Mm. The handwriting is so nice. The person wrote it going, ooh, spicy. Have you ever wanted to give up on us? I know, like, we're having such fun now, it's gotten deep. I won't look you in the eye, don't worry. Have I ever wanted to give up on us? Be honest. When I was mad, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it's it happens. what happens. That definitely happens. Mm -hmm. It's it's. It's a thing. It's a thing. Your turn. When did you really understand you were in love with me? No, but you know what? It was when I, I, I know very well when I understood it. Uh, we'd been together for two years already, and somebody asked me about you, and I was beaming. And they were like, Don't even say anything, your face says anything. And even after they said that, I remember I couldn't stop smiling, and I was just beaming, and I could feel that my cheeks were so warm. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so into this guy. Who's gonna go first? Rock, paper, scissors? Let's try to go first. <laughs> My dear Mpo, thank you for putting the awesome in awesome tutu. Thank you for picking me in an overcrowded ocean, swimming with attractive, more deserving fish. Some which even swim better than me. You made me believe in fairy tale love again and gave me real love and more. Your beautiful heart continues to amaze and humble me. Never have I ever looked forward to seeing someone the way I look forward to seeing you. The way you drink me with your eyes quenches my thirst for love. Your touch, your embrace sets my soul alight. And when you speak gently to me, my body hears and the spirit listens. I love your chocolate skin, your bouncy hair, your innocent smile, your cheeky humor, your huggability, and how easy you are to love. Thank you for gifting me yourself three, triple times. I celebrate every aspect of you in our babies. The fiber to my connection, the airtime to my chat, the petrol to my engine, the kick to my gym. I love you. P.S. For you, I cut bullet and shoot knife. 
sure that's what my angel said to me that morning I had an out of body experience that day I knew I had to ask you to be my forever now that marry your bestie thing isn't for everyone but I know in my soul it was for me Babum's voice kept it real with me and I appreciate that more than ever you've always been someone that carried their heart on their sleeve a person who always seek to know yourself better with every moment and a person who's always kept in touch with family on earth and in heaven. So, before I knew I had to marry my bestie, I knew I had to know myself, to learn how to listen to everyone, even my angels. So when I heard them say, marry your bestie, I smiled, because I knew in that instant, you weren't just my girlfriend, you would be a hell of a lot more than that. I knew you'd be a great daughter to my parents, an amazing mother to our children, and that you would always love me no matter what. What can I say? My angels were right. Thank you. Oh, baby. Let me type it out better. Look how many are crossed out there. It's like, no man, I'm gonna type it out nicely. I'll write it out again for you. Look at you how want clear the original? Look at how clear I was. Like she just knew. I just she knew, knew what it had to say. It just. <laughs> no, me, I have to make sure. I'm not just any good. I told you he thinks things through. I told you. So I think kind of so. I love that. Hi! <laughs> are the awesome, awesome tutus! I'm Dimi Osei Tutu. I'm Mpo Osei Tutu. And thank you for watching our love story on Defining Love. Yes, I'm cheesy. Dennis defined himself, then he decided, let's define love. Mm. And then we all come and visit and define our love. Is our love defined? I believe it has been defined. Definitely. Thank you, Dennis, for <laughs> defining our love. May you define yours forever. Yes. Like, like comment, comment, subscribe. Or as Sophia calls it, subscribe to this video. <laughs> Click. Don't resist it. Just Click. That one. Click. This one. Is it here? That one. It's there. No, it can't be there. It's there. there. No, is it there? There.